Hello, my name is Gab Lavoie, and today we're going to talk about fake Instagram guitarists. And we're also going to talk about whether or not it's worth to fake your guitar videos. So if you're plugged into the online guitar world, you're probably familiar with folks making a name for themselves over the past few years by posting videos of playing showy, complicated guitar music. Some people that come to mind are folks like Ichika Nito or Yvette Young from the band Covet. And usually these videos are quite a lot of fun to watch because you can see the guitarist's hands fly all over the place as they play their instrument. But there is a dark side to this trend. Some artists have been accused of faking their online guitar videos, usually by speeding up the footage to make it appear as though they're playing very, very fast. Using this technique, we can even make me, a non-guitarist, to make it look like I can play guitar very well and very fast, even though I cannot. So why is it a problem? I mean, the obvious answer is that they're cheating, right? But let's go deeper than that. Why is cheating a problem? What happens if you get caught cheating? Being a student of the social sciences, I think that we can explore these questions with the sociological theory of dramaturgy. So let's dive in. In 1959, the Canadian-born sociologist Irving Goffman published a book called The Presentation of Self in Everyday Life. And in this book, he sets out the core principles for his theoretical model that we call dramaturgy. As you can guess from the name, this theoretical model really heavily relies on the analogy of a theater. And in this model, it is your goal as a social actor to give off performances that you hope will be credible to an audience so that they can believe that performance. And your audience is essentially just people other than yourself. And in fact, Goffman would say that the very concept of yourself relies on being able to be perceived by others and also in imagining how others perceive you. This brings us to the really central concept that Goffman calls impression management. This is the activity of trying to get others to perceive you the way you want them to. And this is done through both verbal and nonverbal practices. Now, to help explain this concept, it's important to note that you're going to manage your impression differently depending on the context you find yourself in. To go with the theater analogy again, we can say that you'll be performing different parts, different roles, or different versions of yourself depending on the context you find yourself in. For example, you'll behave very differently as a university student sitting in the lecture hall listening to your professor versus being a student working your part-time job versus being a student in the nightclub. You're probably not about to randomly burst out and dance or openly drink alcohol if you're sitting in a lecture hall or working the cash at Tim Hortons, but you might do that in the nightclub. So it's really important to have a correct understanding of the situation in which you find yourself so that you can perform a role that's appropriate to that situation. In dramaturgy, this is what we call getting the definition of the situation. And when you have a group of people who agree on a certain definition of a situation, we tend to call that group a team. So for example, if we go back to the lecture hall, the professor and all the students listening to that professor are presumably agreeing on the definition of the situation that right now, the main scenario that's happening is that their professor is giving them a lecture. And so that group of people, the professor and their students would comprise a team. Are you still with me at this point? Okay, good. This part actually gets a little bit easier because we get to use much clearer analogies from the theater. Just like an actual theater, Goffman proposes that everyday life includes many of the elements you might find in a theater. These are things like a front stage, a backstage, performers who are up on that stage, and audience members. Let's go with the classic analogy of a restaurant. And we are gonna simplify things a little bit. Let's say that you're a waiter working at this restaurant. In this scenario, you're a performer, and when you're out bussing tables or taking people's orders, you are performing on the front stage, and you're performing for an audience that is composed of your customers. 
And when you perform for your customers, you have to play a very specific role. Generally, you have to be polite, you have to be nice, you have to be patient, courteous, etc. And this is for a few different reasons. Hopefully, one of these reasons is that you want to do your job well. You probably also want to get tips though. And more importantly, this is simply the role that you're expected to perform in this situation. But when you go back into the kitchen or the backstage of this restaurant, you can kind of drop your guard down and discard the role of a waiter and more or less be yourself. You know, here you can complain to all the other waiters and the kitchen staff about your really terrible, crappy customers and like maybe not so accidentally <laughs> cough on their food. You know that this happens. for a real treat. I'm personally gonna prepare the dinner for you and the Maiodri. So very much as the band Rush writes, inspired by Shakespeare, all the world is indeed a stage and we are merely performers and portrayers. Now that we have a good handle on the theoretical material, I think it's pretty simple to see how this theory can transfer over to live music because in this case musicians are usually performing on a stage of some sort. But the question for us is, how can we apply Goffman's theory to our Instagram guitarists? Well, in this case, the guitarist is still the performer. The stage though has become more or less Instagram, the app itself, or whatever other social media you're on. Maybe it's YouTube, maybe it's Facebook, whatever. Your audience is now your social followers or really anyone who's watching that video. And everyone in that situation can probably agree on the definition of the situation, which is yes, right now what you're doing is watching a live performance music video. So what is the impression that the guitarist wants to convey? What is the self that they want their audience to believe them to be? Well, probably they want their audience to believe that they're a good virtuosic musician that can play complicated music. So what do they do? They record a video themselves playing cool, complicated music, post it online and let people watch them play awesome music. Easy peasy. A key difference from a live performance here is that because of the technology involved in creating a recorded performance, the performer has much more control over their performance and the way that they can manage their impression. This is related to a concept that Goffman calls an idealized performance. And this involves playing up or playing down different social cues so that you manipulate the way your audience perceives you. With technology, you can sort of take this to the extreme and achieve a kind of technologically idealized performance. In this kind of scenario, you might achieve this through techniques such as adding audio effects to your guitar tone in post, or maybe you might string different takes together. You might even color grade your footage, or you know, you can always use an Instagram filter to make your face more attractive. If you do decide to artificially enhance your performance by speeding up the footage of you playing guitar, I think it becomes more a question of gauging the risk of what happens if you get caught in your deception. What happens if someone finds out that I sped up that footage of me playing the guitar? This is basically like, if we go back to the restaurant analogy, this is like the customers finding out that I sneezed in their food on purpose. And there's actually quite a lot of consequences to this. So let's break it down. First, what Goffman would call a dark secret has been revealed to your audience. And this is something from the backstage usually that contradicts the performance you're trying to get your audience to believe in. So in this case, the fact that I sped up the footage of me playing the guitar contradicts the idea that I'm actually capable of playing the guitar very well, or at all. Second is the fact that being revealed in your lie will be extremely, if not irreparably, destructive to your image. And this is because that Goffman says that one of the most important rules in our social interaction is that we are who we claim to be in our performances. And generally, our audience has to accept that performance on faith. So if you're caught lying, the entire credibility of your performance and who you claim to be, by extension, your musical ability, will be destroyed. 
and audiences may never again submit on your behalf the moral vulnerability that is required of all social interactions. Third and final is looking at the way that other legit or non-cheating Instagram guitarists react. When they find out someone's cheating, they usually get pretty upset. And this goes to Goffman's notion that as performers, we're also what he calls merchants of morality. This concept is a little bit tricky, but basically it means that while we can benefit from giving off performances that appear morally acceptable, we're also simply compelled to perform that way because it's expected of us while on stage to give performances that are morally acceptable. To illuminate this concept, you can think back to the example of the waiters in the restaurant. They have to be polite to their customers, mostly because they're expected to do so, not necessarily because they're really good people deep down inside. For our purposes as well though, you can think of the idea of merchants of morality also meaning that we, in our performances, appear to endorse whatever morality we're portraying in our performances. So a real or legit Instagram guitarist probably subscribes to the notion that it's important to practice on your craft because that's what makes you a good musician. And when you're caught in your lie of having sped up your guitar footage, it appears as though you're saying, I don't care about practicing on my craft because I can just fake my way to being a good musician. So obviously those musicians who've worked really, really hard to be virtuosos, they're gonna be upset with you. This whole concept of merchants of morality, to me, really goes to the core of the saying, actions speak louder than words. So in conclusion, you can decide for yourself whether you think faking your next Instagram video is worth it or not. But like on a quick benefit versus risk analysis, I don't really think it's worth it. Like you might lose your entire reputation and you also got to think about the signals you're sending to people if you get caught. That being said though, if you're straight up with people from the get-go that your performance is faked, kind of like what Ben Levin does in some of his recent videos. Does anyone else think fake guitar sounds really cool? Everyone thinks it sounds very cool, very cool but it's very cheating! Cool, very cool. And I know it makes people feel cheated, it makes people mad, but like, if we were just honest about it, and we are like, hey, I'm making fake guitar, it'd be a cool genre. That's another thing completely. You can get away with it if you're not pretending to be someone you're not. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I really hope that you enjoyed my dramaturgical analysis of Instagram guitar videos. I'm also really interested to know what you guys thought of this video. If you have any different ideas, perspective, or insights on this topic, be sure to let me know in the comments because I'm always interested in learning more in these topics. If you also want to see more videos like this in the future, please take a second to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and also click that bell icon. That way you don't miss out on future videos that I make. My name's Gab Lavoie. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.